In this video, we're going to take a look at a tool that Oracle provides to you so that you can figure out what's going on on your system and do some performance tuning. And it's called SQL Trace. SQL Trace is a real simple way of being able to go in and look at the execution of a statement and see how hard Oracle is working to figure out how to resolve the statement. If you remember from our earlier discussions on SQL, we said that one of the unique aspects of the SQL language is the fact is we don't tell the engine, which of course is the Oracle database engine in this particular example, what method to use to get the data. The engine is supposed to be smart enough to kind of figure out this is the most efficient way. Do I use an index? Do I do a full table scan? Can I uh, rearrange the join predicates? Uh, in a more efficient manner for me to pull back the data that I'm looking for. We don't tell Oracle how to do any of that stuff. We can tell Oracle by use of something called hints, which we're going to talk about in a different video. But for now, just understand that, for the most part, we don't tell Oracle how to actually go out there and get the data. We just say to Oracle, this is the data we're interested in, you figure out how to do it. SQL Trace gives us a way of looking at how hard Oracle is working to execute a particular statement. There's some pros and cons that are working with, with SQL Trace. Uh, the biggest pro that goes along with it is that it's relatively easy to do. The biggest con that goes along with SQL Trace is that you have to actually execute the statement. And, you know, what if you're in a situation where you have a really bad performing piece of information, a bad performing query, and the query runs for two hours, or three hours, or four hours. Well, the only way to get accurate SQL trace information is to let the actual query run and do its magic, and then look at the number. You may not have three or four hours to sit there and, and wait and figure out, you know, how can I tune this particular query to figure out what's going on. But it is relatively easy to use, and the newest version of SQL Developer has these elements built right into it. So you can run a SQL trace without having to understand any of the steps. But we're going to go through the steps anyway, just so you can uh, understand exactly how to find all the pieces of information. There's also another piece of, uh, another program that we're going to have to worry about. And it's called TKProf. And what TKProf does is it takes the output of the SQL trace file and it formats it for us so that we can read the information relatively easily without having to understand all of the gory details of what's going on behind the scenes. There's other tuning tools that are available to us now. I'm going to talk about those in other videos. But for now, I'm just going to talk about SQL Trace so that we can go ahead and uh, get a basic understanding of how to figure out how, how hard the Oracle database is working uh, to satisfy the queries that we're looking at. So if you hop into SQL Developer, as I've done numerous times, if I have a real simple statement, let's say, let's take a look at one of our HR tables here. And let's say job history. And let's say I am going to pull all the information. See, there's only 10 rows there. We really need a, a table that has something bigger than that. But unfortunately, this is probably the best we're going to be able to do. Departments has uh, 27 rows on it. So if I'm going to write a query that goes against this, and let's say I'm just going to query everything. I'm going to select star from HR departments. Because it's such a small table, it's not going to take very long to run. So I, I query the information. Boom, it comes back pretty quickly. Five, what is that? Tens, hundredths, five hundredths, thousandths of a second. It was able to fetch those 27 rows. So it's probably able to pull all that stuff right out of memory, even though we're doing a full table scan on it because we don't have a where clause. One of the really nice things that's built right into um, SQL Developer are these auto trace and explain plans. So I can go in and I can look at the explain plan for how Oracle is going to go out and look at this information. So you can see that when I click on it, it looks at the SQL statement. It says I'm going to do table access departments. I have to do a full table scan. I didn't qualify it with anything. If I had a where clause where I had a column that had an index on it, obviously uh, Oracle could use that index to get information a lot easier. But because I didn't do any of that stuff, it's going to do a full table scan. So if you have SQL Developer available to you, you can have really complex queries, select statements, joins, and then just click on this explain plan, and Oracle will show you exactly how it's going to go out there and uh, get the information out of your database. What if you don't have SQL Developer for whatever reason? You can't use it uh, at the site that you're at. You're going against a, an old database, or there's some requirement that you can't use graphical tools to interface with your database, whatever reason. If you can't do that, then you have to do things manually. So we're going to hop into a uh, DOS session here, and I'm just going to connect to my database. 
as the sys user here. And I'm going to do a select star from HR department. And you can see it comes back. And again, it's virtually instantaneous because all of this stuff has been cached in memory and we're talking about a real small table. You won't always have that uh, functionality available or you won't always have that scenario available to you as you're working with an Oracle database. So what are the first things that we have to do? Well, let's say I want to get some kind of output and I want to see what I saw in SQL Developer. I want to see this information here of how Oracle is going against data inside my database. How do I do it? Well, there's a couple of steps you have to go through. The first thing is to determine where your um, your uh, files are going to be written to on your operating system. Uh, Oracle has a whole bunch of parameters called the init.org parameters, and you query those through a view called v$parameter, and this will tell you where Oracle is going to write its system files out to. So the first thing we have to determine is where in the world Oracle is going to write them out to. So if we do a select value from v$parameter, and it's not parameters with an S, you would think it is, but it's a few dollar parameter, where name is equal to user dump dest. So the user dump destination is where files are going to be written to the operating system when you turn your tracing on. So Oracle is going to go out there and it's going to create this trace file with a random number on it, so you're going to have to remember what that number is, and then run your tkprof executable against it to try and format it into something meaningful. So we know where that directory is here, so if I go into uh, my program that I use for uh, directory management here on my PC, you can see here's the D Oracle database diag rdbms sandbox sandbox trace directory, and let me move this over here so we can see all the different files. So these are the different files, uh, the trace files that have been created for me automatically. And if I sort this by time, you can see that all the time's out there right now. You can't see my system clock, but my system clock says 348 right now. So when I run the statement, it should generate a new file with the timestamp right around 348. It might be 349 by the time I get to it. But let's go back into here. And what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, we're going to alter our session, and we're going to set SQL trace equal to true. So my session is now altered, and you can see in the background here, a new trace file has been created. It has a zero length um, size, and it's 348. So it's gone out there, and it's actually created the trace file form. And there's nothing in it yet, because I haven't run any statements against it yet, but uh, the trace file is starting to be created. So now I'm going to do my select, actually, let me just do the up, up, up arrow here, select star from HR and apartments. So it went out there and it did it. It put trace information into this file. It still has a zero length file because it hasn't closed the file yet. But it's written some information out to my trace file. And I'm going to alter my session again and set SQL trace to false. System's altered. It's updated. Did I actually set that to false? No, I set it to true. Okay, so I set it to false. So now we have this new file out there. So let me refresh this and. Now we have numbers in there, and you can see the timestamp on there is uh, 348, which is what I thought. So we have this uh, TRC file, and if I take a look at the TRC file, it doesn't mean anything to me. I can pull up the TRC file, and let me show you what it looks like in the editor here. So there's my sandbox or a 2346.trace file. It has all of these different things in it. You know, there's the statement that uh, I set it on, alter system set SQL trace equal to true. There's my select star from HR departments. But, you know, what in the world is all this stuff? Parse, exec, fetch, all these different numbers. These don't mean anything to me. So it sort of helps us out. It gets us started, but it doesn't really help us out that much. So let's go back into my DOS window. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a command called tkprof. And what tkprof will do is it'll take that file and format it for me. So I'm going to take tkprof and I'm going to have to specify this hideous directory here. So I'm going to specify that whole directory. I don't feel like typing it a second time. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste, and the name of the file was sandbox underscore aura underscore 2364 dot trc and then the second parameter I'm going to pass to the tkprof executable is what I want the formatted file to look like so I'm just going to call it x.txt 
took that file, formatted for me, so now in my D directory I have this x.txt, so then I can just do notepad x.txt, brings up notepad, hey, that looks a heck of a lot nicer, gives me the ability to go in there and actually take a look at what's going on, and kind of format it for me, and it looks a heck of a lot nicer, right? So this first command was alter session, set sql trace equal to true. That's obviously not going to do anything on our system, but here's the information that I'm interested in. And so here's where it starts, SQL ID, and it goes all the way through this. So what we have there on my screen, and I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to bring that into a different notepad window, just so we don't have the other stuff on there is a representation of what Oracle had to do to satisfy the statement. So select star from HR departments to actually parse the information, to execute the information, to actually fetch and bring it back. You can see that it brought back 27 rows. How hard did the Oracle database have to work? How often did it have to go out to disk? How many cycles did it have to uh, use in memory to satisfy the query, to make all of those different pieces? We're going to go through each one of these in more detail when we look at tuning. But this video was just really meant to show you uh, the SQL trace utility, how to go in there and get more information about the queries that are going on against your database, and how to quickly uh, be able to determine how hard Oracle is working when it comes time for you to satisfy one of those queries.